is Neeraj Bhavani. I'm from uh, Tagnos. And uh, thank you so much for being here this afternoon. I promise I won't take more than 10 minutes of your time to present these slides. Um, so Tagnos is being incubated uh, by Cisco. Um, we've been um, in the Cisco program for more than six months now. They're funding the company. And so what we do is we, we track patients inside the hospitals to improve the patient flow and patient experience. And the problem we're solving uh, in the hospital world um, is that the reimbursement model for the hospitals have changed dramatically. You know, uh, earlier it was all about quality of clinical care, but now they have to focus on patient experience, efficiency, and uh, there's a lot of population health um, metrics that almost demand uh, that the patient flow metrics be reported back to the accountable care organization. I mean, it's, it's a complex world out there, but very simply put, because the US healthcare is moving into a capitation model, uh, and because of population health, uh, there's a big demand uh, for tools by the hospital executives to do more with less. You know, just like the keynote presentation this morning, they have to do more with less for more. And um, so they need new tools to make that shift happen. Um, and Tagnos enables that shift, right, the, the, uh, to, to make the processes more efficient and also um, engage the patient and the family uh, with, with the regular updates to improve the patient satisfaction scores and optimize wait times. So as you can tell from this slide, this is a schematic of how the solution comes together. Uh, it's really for our platform to work, all that we need is the patient wearing a disposable location bracelet. That's all we need. Uh, if the asset has a tag, great. Uh, if the staff can wear a tag to coordinate transportation activity, even better. But all that we need is, is a patient to wear a, a disposable location bracelet. And now there's a patient helping the hospital, saying, hey, I'm here, it's half an hour, nobody's taking care of me, right? They can, they can push messages. They can keep the immediate care team updated, the doctors, the nurses, and the family, the progress that they're making. And that improved visibility, that improved communication leads to you know, collapsing the cycle time or, or reducing the length of stay, right? Um, so it's, it's a very simple um, solution, I mean, conceptually. But then a lot of the IP that we have is how do we take the random movement of the patient uh, into queues and, and the smarts, and how do we remove all the noise uh, because patients can come in in any room and leave in any, from any room, especially ER is very chaotic. That's where the secret sauce of the patents are. Uh, so this gives you an idea about the footprint we have. Uh, we were ramping up pretty fast now. Last year, we were just at about two or three hospitals. Just uh, in last four months, we've closed four new hospitals. And there's a lot of momentum now, simply because the right market drivers are finally here. Right? We, were, we were always doing the right thing. It's just the market drivers caught up to us now that you know, everybody in the US in the healthcare system are talking about efficiencies, the market drivers are on need for metrics, are on, on patient flow, efficiency scores. Uh, all of that is driving the change. And um, obviously, you know, uh, part of this is also that there is um, direct ROI associated with improved efficiency now. Uh, with, with the reimbursement model and with length of stay, we've, we've delivered, we've shown how the uh, ROI could be uh, in terms of the reducing the cycle time or length of stay and how that leads to uh, improved revenues. Uh, so this is the slide I was going to talk about further is um, we've shown how the utilization of the room goes up. Just that dollar amount that you see is just based on a couple of procedure rooms in radiology. And we're beginning to, we've actually done a hospital-wide install in September. We're doing one more this year. So if you can imagine, that's the amount of revenue the hospital can make in a year for just two procedure rooms in radiology. Imagine the hospital-wide impact, right, the Tagnos platform is going to generate. Likewise, with the staffing, too, this is just one department. In the registration area, they were overstaffed. And, and post-Tagnos, we're able to optimize the staffing in the registration area as well. Again, this is just one department. Imagine the impact we're going to create hospital-wide, right? And so, and, and likewise, the, the length of stay is, all, uh, is where all the dollars are tied to. And we know that we are delivering significant value to the hospital, and a lot of the pricing is just not even value-based pricing, it's cost-plus pricing at this point, just to get some footprint. Um, this is the pricing model, how it works. It's, it's a SaaS model, it's a three-year, four-year service model. If it's a departmental sale, we can get anywhere from 8,000 to 10,000 a month. If it's a hospital-wide sale, we can get 20 to 30,000 a month, and we've already validated that pricing with, with, with the signed contracts that we have. So these are the patents that we have. We have a patent granted, that's a patent number. Um, and a lot of this is about the smarts and the algorithms and how we process the data. As I said, you know, ER is very chaotic. Patients can come in any, anywhere, go, from, go out from anywhere. Uh, the patients can come in from ambulance. They can bypass some of the steps. Uh, and, and how do you take that kind of chaotic 
uh, random patient movement and still put some sense to a structure uh, so the nurses can understand where the patients are and where the delays are is where the IP is. Um, and, um, you know, and obviously, you know, if you have any questions about the intellectual property, uh, the patent number is right there. You can always Google and go there. Um, I'll give you my email toward the end, too, if you, if you have any further questions to ask. But the competition is, uh, is focused on asset tracking. Where we specialize is really on the, on the workflow around the patient and patient experience and patient flow. That's where we have clear market leadership. And, um, and a lot of this is about making sure that you know, it's just, it's the, the different service lines inside the hospital, like ER, OR, radiology, cardiology, right? tracking them through all the different service lines, identifying bottlenecks, predicting bottlenecks, you know, having people engaged around the bottlenecks, having people collaborate around the bottlenecks. This is where our partnership with Cisco lies. Uh, so Cisco is one of our distributors for product. And we also have a healthcare company called Stryker uh, that's also reselling the company. Um, so, so along with Stryker um, and Cisco, we also have uh, Optum United Healthcare, which is uh, reselling a product too. So there's a lot of demand for metrics now in, in, uh, on the data inside the hospital world. So this is the uh, management team that we have. Um, so I got a healthcare informatics background from uh, working for companies such as Kaiser, Perm uh, Kaiser Permanente, um, Amgen Blue Shield, um, you know, have a business degree from UCLA. Um, we have um, a lot of people from the team, like the CTO um, has already had a good successful exit in the past. Um, he worked for a company called Logical Apps that got acquired by Oracle. He left Oracle in September to join us full time now. Uh, we have uh, Rick Norling, who's a senior fellow for IHI Institute for Healthcare Improvement. We have Dr. David Belson, who's a professor for industrial engineering. And if you can think about it, what we're doing is essentially bringing the lean philosophy or industrial engineering method uh, methodology to hospitals, right? So, that we, uh, we, uh, so all the resources can be geared real time around the patient as the patient is moving and making progress in the flow. Uh, we, we have uh, you know, retired hospital CEOs as agent investors, former chairman of hospital association, chief operating officer of Florida Blue is an investor. Um, we have some surgeons who have invested money in the company, and we have some data analytics people as part of our team as well. So this is the revenue ramp up, and um, we made 300,000 last year. We are on track to do a million plus this year. Just the first quarter alone, we made uh, more than 200,000 in revenue, and we're just beginning to close more sales. So. We are, uh, so we, we would probably be pegging at a million and a half, but we, we know we would at least make a million in revenue uh, this year. And um, sorry about that. Yeah, in terms of a raise, we've done a seed round of a million dollars in the past. Uh, we had a fund from Singapore put in half the money. We had UCLA Foundation put in some money. Uh, my own business school professors invested money in my company, and my classmate invested 100000 in the seed round. Um, from UCLA, so, um, so we have uh, good, smart healthcare angel investors as part of the seed money round. And right now, with Cisco committing into a Series A, we're looking for a lead investor to join the round and close the round. And we've identified a couple of uh, VCs that would participate in the round. Thank you very much.